Hello. Hello. I am your resident vampire for this evening. Uh, I am Synthetic, one of the chancellors here at Nerds with Dice. Uh, and I am going to be playing through a solo vampire survival game tonight, which uh, looks to be a lot of fun. Uh, before I get started on that, I do want to take a moment. Oh, I've forgotten the the things that we always say. Let me pull that up. Ah, no, I don't have it. Um, I do know that we are sponsored by uh, Grinding Co. Coffee. I just can't remember the spiel now, so my apologies for that. Uh, and... Hello! I see a number of friendly faces. Hello to Knox, hello to Enio. Hello to Soulful Sapphic and Yoda Almighty. We are going to... Ah, yes, sponsored by Grinding Co. Coffee, a black and LGBTQ plus owned business. Thank you, Knox. Use the con code GUNMETALBLUES or the, the link, and I think I actually can do the link. Is it just coffee? There we go. Uh, that's everything that I can remember about. Oh no, we have merch. I remember, we have merch. So if you want our merch, go there. That's anyhow. On to tonight to explain what I am uh, doing. I am playing a solo uh, survival game in which I am trying to survive the night as a vampire who has been uh, gravely injured. It's in your head. It's not in my box. And in order to survive the night, we're going to go through, I will make a character and we will do that on stream here. We will see if I survive the night, and we will celebrate. Uh, now, I don't have an official bot for it or anything, but we will also be giving away a copy of this solo TTRPG uh, made by a good friend of mine, Ineo. Uh and we'll be doing that basically just i will be saying it over the course of the night if you want to be entered into that then uh let me know in chat i'll keep track of the names and i will uh be doing a uh drawing at the end of the stream okay so, at the start of the game, uh, we're supposed to take time uh, to figure out what kind of vampire uh, we were before tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to start out with just going to name the vampire Alex. Uh, Strong, always used non binary name. Uh, and 
what are you known for? Let's say a vicious betrayal of a local uh, prince. We'll use some Vampire the Masquerade terms, but we uh, will not use all of them because, quite frankly, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Uh, why? What are we doing, or what were we doing, uh, the night before this one? I'm going to say the night before this one, we were celebrating a great victory. Uh, and how did you end up on the brink of death. The celebration was attacked. Uh, so it turns out that uh, after we uh, had betrayed the prince, uh, we were led into a trap of a situation in which we were unable to defend our compatriots. Uh, what is your goal? Let's say the goal will be uh, making it through the warehouse district. We're in a major city, and we have to make it through the warehouses, through the docks. Uh, and who can help you? Uh, we're going to say my mentor. Um, what's well, a good mentor name? say yeah let's go with it's going to be a little bit different Aramaeus Let's do that. Our mentor and probably the person that turned us Aramaeus would be the only person uh, who we could turn to in this moment. Okay, so we have set up our uh, scenario. We were attacked, we were having fun, on the docks, uh, I think that's a great place for a vampire party because of all the stuff about uh, running water, all of the weaknesses of that area. Having a party there sounds like a big middle finger to vampiric tradition, so that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, and we've got... Uh, three stats that we get to choose for Alex. We have ferocity, cunning, and influence. Okay, so ferocity uh, reflects your resolve, ability to endure harm, and force of will. You are fierce and will tear down anything in your way. Okay, cunning reflects your cleverness, your ability to think quickly and avoid danger. You are deceitful and evasive, and you will not be caught. That doesn't sound like me in the situation, in the scenario that I have put together. 
And then we have influence, reflects your control over others, ability to draw attention and charm. You've already made plans for a night like this, and your people will protect you. That sounds more like the type of uh, vampire that I would uh, like to be. So we are going to assign our highest stat to uh, influence, our lowest stat to cutting, and our middle stat to ferocity. Uh, so the way this works is I will get a number of D4s equal to the stat that I use. Uh, and my goal is going to be to make it through uh, six individual rounds. And uh, we will be accumulating with this uh, lovely die uh, blood tokens, which will help us through in the end, okay? Uh, there are six rounds representing six hours. And we will uh, come up on uh, specific challenges on each hour. At the end of the game, we'll do one last roll to resolve the final event and see if we made it through the night. Uh, I will go through. We start out with zero blood, and we start out with 3d4, 2d4, and 1d4 on our stats. Uh, we roll whatever stat we are rolling for, and we resolve by looking for the highest number that we have among them. And this is a Caltrop core game. So we are using the pointy ones. We're using D4s for this. Uh, so a one is an absolute failure. If you roll only ones, you don't get what you want and things get a lot worse. You lose a blood token and reduce your stat by 1d4. 2. You get a partial failure. You don't get what you want. Reduce your stat by 1d4. A 3 is a partial success. You get what you want, but things get complicated. Gain a blood token, and reduce your stat by 4. So if we get at least a 3, we get blood tokens that we can use for future. And four is an absolute success. You get what you want and more. Gain a blood token. No loss of stats on that one. Uh, so blood tokens, we can spend one blood token uh, in order to add a d4 to our next roll. This represents you using your supernatural abilities to help you aid in the conflict. But if we save those blood tokens, at the end of the game, they give us a plus one to our final roll. So we've got to keep that in mind. So from the start, let's figure out, because we roll on a table, uh, to see what our first encounter is. Uh, we roll 2d20s, which I have these brilliant dragon scale d20s that I absolutely adore. But will they betray me? We will find out. Uh, I can get two encounters that I can pick between. Or, if I get the same number on both dice, that uh, encounter was faded. That encounter is what we go to, but we get an extra d4 to our stat chosen to resolve the event. That bonus only applies to that encounter and doesn't carry over to our next roll. So, let's start off. We are in hour one. Okay, we didn't get matching numbers. We got a two and a fifteen. 
Uh, you find yourself in another vampire's territory. You are not welcome here. And 15, uh, you are challenged to a duel by someone you do not know. Okay. So, I think... I enjoy the idea of this character not necessarily knowing what their weaknesses are from the outset. Uh, and maybe they don't understand how just how close to death they are. So we're going to start out with the challenge to a duel by someone you do not know. Uh, let's go ahead and let's make it realistic because we are uh, in a situation where uh, we are not at our peak. So let's say it is uh, against a duel, uh, so, uh, someone else's thrall that we are challenged to a duel by. Uh, let's say that, uh, if we succeed at this, we actually might get a clue as to who the attacker was, uh, in, at the celebration. Nice. Okay. We actually got a four. So we got everything we want and more. We gain a blood token. So that is our first blood token. We also know now just how weak we are by uh, comparison to what we usually are. But we're able to take out the ghoul and we're able to find uh, that this thrall was connected uh, to, let's say, the court of the prince. So we now know for sure who is after us. We had a sense before, but now we know. Let's go. We are going in to hour two now. Uh, we have done something brief and bloody. Uh, let's... Roll the dice. That was hot. Okay. Well, we got a 15 again, but I don't want to do the same thing over. So we also got an 8. You wander into a trap. Um, now, I like the idea of I have not uh realized the power until that duel so now i know i i am not at my full power i think it makes sense on this one to go for talking my way out of it uh so i am going to say that I wander into a trap. It is another uh, vampire. And this is a vampire that is at full strength. I am going to attempt to talk my way out of the situation. So I am going to use influence in this situation, which is my three dice pool. Uh, I'm using what I'm best at, and I am going to say, you think that I betrayed the prince, but it was only because I learned what the prince's plans were with the rest of the city. Uh, and let's say that this prince was actually going to, uh, I will, I will at least instill the idea 
that this prince was uh, going to turn the city over to another entity. Let's actually say it was the, the Inquisition. So a human entity the prince was going to conspire with. Kind of a tall tale, but let's see how it goes. You know what? The dice are kind, and I get all that I wanted and more from this. So I now have two blood tokens. What I'm going to say happens is I actually have gotten a little bit close to the truth. There has been evidence in the court that this prince uh, has been creating allies among humans, okay? Uh, and because of that, this is believable uh, for the person that I am speaking to, okay? Uh, so because of that, we got lucky. We've gotten quite lucky so far, but something tells me that the, the, the luck will not hold out. So let's find out, going into hour three, what we find waiting for us among the warehouses. Okay, we got a four and an eleven. So, the four is you meet someone who claims you owe them a favor. Uh, and eleven is you discover that an ally has betrayed you. I don't... I'm not going to go for the uh, ally betrayal, because we've got a lot of betrayals going on in the story already. So I think I want to go for the, you meet someone who claims you owe them a favor. Uh, and this is going to be someone who it is actually a uh, werewolf. This is going to be someone that I got information from uh, who was an underling of the prince. And this particular werewolf has been caught on hard times because of my betrayal. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, continue down the road of utilizing our persuasive capability. We're going to say, yes, I do owe you a favor. And if you assist me for the rest of the evening, I will repay, repay that favor in kind. Now, what the werewolf doesn't know, or at least we're going to find out if the werewolf knows, is that Alex uh, plans to uh, off them at their first opportunity. So... Uh, let's go ahead and see how that goes. Fantastic. We are getting excessively 
lucky. We have not rolled below a four yet. And now we have a uh, a werewolf ex escort uh, for the final three hours of the evening. I think that's we're we're doing pretty good uh, from the off so far. So as a recap, we've made it through. Three hours. It is now 3 a.m. We are trying to get to our mentor's uh, location before 6 a.m., before sunrise. So we are going to go ahead and roll on and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to re-roll one of those because I got a another repeat. I don't want to do that. Do you find a mortal walking alone at night, or do you come across another vampire in need of help? I think we're going to go for the mortal walking alone at night, and we are going to uh, lean in to the fact that Alex is not nice or kind. Yes, we we are going to lean in to murder. Uh, and we are actually going to lean in hard. I'm going to use a blood token. And we are going to get a third dice. And we are going to use ferocity in this situation. Uh, so let's see what happens. Our awfulness is repaid. We have the luckiest vampire to ever exist. Uh, we get our blood token back. I... I'm speechless at this point. But we are doing quite well. We are through four hours. What I think I'm Well, let's let's see what comes in hour five. Okay, a 20 and a 17. Okay, so you have an insatiable desire to feed. Or you find someone that owes you a debt, but is unwilling to pay it. Okay, so... We don't have much reason to deal with people at this point. Uh, we're going to expend another blood token, and we are going to attempt, since uh, this person is unwilling to repay this debt, uh, Alex is all for getting debts repaid in other ways. So we are going to attempt to take it out in blood using ferocity. We are going to expend a blood token. And we're going to see if we can keep our six dice for the end. Oh, our first non-four result. Uh, let's go back up because I don't even remember what the non-four results are. Okay. 
you get what you want, but the thing, but the situation gets complicated. So our ferocity is going to go down to a D4. We are going to get our blood token back, though. So in this situation, we are to a point where we cannot fight anymore. What I'm going to say in this situation is our ferocity and cunning are just not available to us. For our final hour, we are going to have to use influence. Uh, now, on the bright side, we do have three blood tokens. So we are doing well. But things could get messy quick. So let's find out what our next situation is. Mm, we're going to reroll those. When you get the same result, sometimes you just re-roll. Oh. A friend or ally of yours has gone missing. So, I'm going to go a little bit off script of the game here. Uh, I'm going to make this roll. We're going to use influence. And let's say that getting into uh, the nest in this situation is going to require me uh, using uh, influence to find where my mentor actually is. Okay. I do it. So, here's where I'm going to add an additional hour. Because I like what we've had going on so far. I like the story that we're creating. And we are underground. We are safe, but we're not safe as of yet. We have made it into our mentor's sanctum, but our mentor is missing. So we are going to be searching for the reason why. And let's see what we encounter in the sewers. Okay. Oh, this works very well. So, we are in the sewers. We are in a situation where we are expecting to find our mentor. And we discover proof in this moment, in our mentor sanctum, that our mentor was the one, Aramaeus was the one behind the attack at the beginning of the night. So let's go ahead and with this, Let's use a blood token. And we will attempt to use influence. Uh, and let's see what happens. Okay. 
I, I am going to use, I had a thought, and I am going to use that thought. Uh, because this is the person closest to us betraying us, I am going to take out the die with the highest result. And I am going to use the second highest result. Uh, we are going to lose an influence. Uh, and that's it. Okay. It, it was a two. Reduce your stat by 1d4. So, in this situation, we were able to get to a point where we talked our way into another uh, sanctum. Let's say our werewolf uh, ally that we have made has actually agreed to uh, take care of us in this night. Uh, but let's find out with that, we roll 4d4 plus 3. Let's find out how it goes in the end. Okay. You survived, and you were safe and sound. Describe your haven. We are literally in a windowless basement of a biker bar. This is not an ideal situation for us. Uh, we are not living our best life. But we are alive. And when we are alive, that means that we can take vengeance. And what form that vengeance will take is a story for another day. I really enjoy this system. I, I think that in particular, it would be a wonderful uh, guided experience. I know solo games are great because they're solo play, but you could have someone run through this if they were in like a TPK situation in a vampire game. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, it went relatively quickly. So, I was expecting us to be around a little bit longer. So, I think what I'm actually going to do is we are going to, uh, first I'm going to take a drink because I haven't drank water this entire time. Okay, we have done one run of this game. And again, we have a code to give away a copy of this game. So if you are interested in that code, uh, please say so in chat and we'll run a uh, thing at the end of the evening. But as of right now, I, I would like to go through this a second time. So let's go ahead and let's do a less uh, conventional vampire narrative. 
So let's go outside of the world of Vampire the Masquerade. Even though I understand, inspired by, there's actually a, a good section at the beginning, uh, or just in the credits, where it talks about how it's heavily inspired by Vampire the Masquerade and the actual play, uh, LA, L.A. by Night in specific, and the what we do in the Shadow series. So, I like that in our first story, we paid homage to that. But, let's get weird with it. So, let's, let's keep our name just because that's easier for my brain to comprehend. Uh, let's say that Alex is the last known vampire. Okay? So, Alex was part of Kindred, but they have not seen any in, let's say, decades. Uh, so, let's go through the why. What were you doing the night before this one? Let's see, you're the last surviving vampire that you know of. There could be others out there, you never know. Uh, I think you're probably hunting for kills. Because in that world, there's got to be vampire hunters all around. Like, if you are one of the final surviving vampires... That's going to be a difficult life to lead. And how did you end up on the brink of death? Uh, let's say caught in a blazing inferno. Uh, kind of like a firebomb trap that was left by vampire hunters. We killed the hunters but we were very weak and let's say that this is in we did a a city setting so let's go rural for this uh I, we were attacked in a place that is in the middle of nowhere and our goal in this situation is getting underground, finding somewhere that is underground. Let's make it more difficult. It's snowing. We could try to just dig our way under, but we don't have the strength. So we are in a snowy rural setting. And our goal is to find a basement. And our question, our last question, is who can help you? And the answer to that is no one. So, in this scenario, we're going to run through it again, and we are moving from the betrayer to, uh, yeah, reverse 30 days of night. Very, yeah. We are looking for shelter before the sun rises. And we don't know 
where shelter would be. Let's say we were even, like, taken from another location. So we're piling up the, the bad in this situation. Because Alex number one had too easy of a time. Luck was on their side. We want awful things to happen to Alex number two. Why? Because drama is good. So, this time we're going to do a ferocity of three, a cunning of two, and an influence of one. So, we're saying in this situation that our vampire has been through hell and back. A final living vampire, to their knowledge. And it's been a time. So let's start anew, back to zero blood, and let's see what happens in this scenario. see, 18 and 10. Okay, so you come across another vampire in need of help. We're not even going to look at that as an option. There are no other vampires as far as we know, so we're going to take the other one, which is a priest, and their religious followers stand in your way. And I'm telling you, if you're the, the last surviving vampire, to your knowledge, you know how to deal with clergy. And that is with ferocity. So let's see how that goes. Ooh, we are not starting out with the best situation this time. Uh, we do get a blood token, but our ferocity goes down to two. So what happened in this situation? We are uh, dealing with a priest and their followers. And in the midst of the battle, we get a crucifix uh, to the cheek. And it burns, but it doesn't like stay, kind of like goes down cheek. And now I'm remembering that we haven't, like, talked about content warnings, but, you know, vampire game. So all of the content warnings that would be in effect for that. But in, in this situation, we might get a, a little bit of, of gore. So, run number two. We have uh, we got a three on that, so we did get a blood token, but our ferocity has gone down. So we lost a stat in the first encounter this time. Our dice are like, you had it too good last time. So let's find out what we're dealing with in the second hour. Let's see, four and 13. Someone or something is following you. I like that. So, I think we're going to try to use cunning in this situation. We are going to attempt to get away. And let's see how that goes. Oh. Oh. It is a partial failure. This is the first time we've gotten a failure, so this is going uh, poorly, which was my, my hope that we wouldn't get as lucky the second time around. So, what happens? We reduce the stat by 1d4, so our cunning is now 1. We do not get a blood token. And we get away 
but in the process, we are going to encounter a bear trap. I won't go into too much detail, but needless to say, uh, we are not going to be able to get away as quickly from this. So, we are now in the second hour, and things are going very poorly. Uh, let's find out what happens in hour three. Let's see. Nine and a five. Vampire hunters are on your trail. You know what? Let's let's do that. Uh we're going to attempt cunning. We don't have much cunning left. But let's see when we roll with one die for the first time, how well the spiky one deals with us. Oh my goodness. One die, but we got a four. There is kindness in the world, is what I have learned. The luck's back. We'll see if it stays. We're halfway through the night. But we are able to slip away. And let's say we find a road. And a road means that it that there is civilization. Civilization means a possible building. And that's what we're looking for, is a building we can hole up in. Let's find out what happens in hour four. Let's see, a nine and a thirteen. We did the someone or something is following you. So let's do you find a mortal walking alone at night. This is pure ferocity. We are attempting to feed. Let's go in. Oh no. Oh no. When we attempt to do that, our situation gets markedly worse. That was an absolute failure. So we lose a blood token. We're down to one blood token. And we lose our last additional D4. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> So we attempted to feed on a mortal, only to realize that it was one of the vampire hunters. And they came back at us with holy water. <laughs> I can just see that gift, yeah. So. We now have one blood token and one d4 across the board. Now, stats can't go lower. So, let's find out what happens in hour five. Okay, this time it makes sense. Vampire hunters are on your trail. Let's see what happens with our one die. Okay, roller coaster. We get a blood token, 
and nothing else happens because that was a four. Nothing else could have happened. So effectively, a three and a four are the same result now. Because what would have happened is you lose a d4, but you can't reduce uh, a stat by less than 1d4. So, good to know. Let's see what happens. Uh, we are able to break away, and we see a small hamlet. So there is a small village out here in the frozen wilderness. And we just have to, at this point, figure out where a safe spot would be. Stop rolling 13. Stop rolling 9. Okay. Oh! Okay. I forgot what the other die was. And they all... We're going to re-roll that. Okay. We're rolling that one because other vampires don't exist. I want something climactic. Okay. Oh, Singularity! Welcome on in, Raiders! Uh, we are in the middle of playing Bloodless, uh, a vampire survival game. We did very well in our first round, so I wanted to go again and see if we could do less well. Came to harass me? Well, that's lovely of you. Guess what? If you are interested in having a copy of this game, Bloodless, we are giving one away. So if you are interested in that, uh, let me know, and I will put you into the drawing for that. Uh, as we come down to the wire. Ah. Uh, We are in the sixth hour, and I have just gotten the result that a mortal has seen you and recognizes you for what you are. We are playing, uh, this, this scenario is we have been trapped by vampire hunters. We are, to our knowledge, the last surviving vampire. And we are trying to make it out of this situation a lot. I am going... I am not going to use a blood token. Because I realize at this point, I have 1d4. I have, on this die, a 50% chance to get a blood token. I have on this die a 25% chance to get nothing. I have a 25% chance to lose a blood token. So rather than spending a resource, we're going to go for the 50-50 shot that we will actually gain a resource uh, without utilizing any of our current blood tokens. This die has been kind. It has also been very rude. Let's find out where it's going to be in our second to last, our penultimate roll of the night. It is very kind. That is a four. So we get a blood token. That means going into the end, 
a mortal recognize us for what we were, and we just use ferocity and snap their neck. Done. And now, we know that they're dead. So we're going to drag them back into their home, and our final check is going to be finding out if we can trick the hunters into believing that something else got them. So we get plus three on this roll, and we roll a 3d4. So for those of you coming in, we are going to survive the night. There is no chance that we are not, because uh, your final death only happens on a five, 1 to 5. So this is how good we come out. Okay, so that's a 6 plus the 3 for my blood tokens. You have survived the night, but there's still a problem. Describe how your situation got more complicated. So, I barricaded myself in to this person's house. But what I didn't notice is that the, there is a snowstorm coming out that is getting worse. And so, I am going to be barricaded in. And in this region, I could be locked in for months, but I have survived the night. So, there we go. With a little bit of helpful harassment from our friends, thank you again to Singularity, we have made it through. And I think what we'll probably end up doing is uh, doing that giveaway on our Discord server. Unless anyone wants to come in at the end and snipe that. Because if you're interested in solo TTRPGs, this one is very fun. Uh, so we're going to outro at this point. Thank you for, I, I can't say thank you for providing a copy, because I actually already owned this. It was one of those, I, I had gotten an itch.io bundle, and it was for trans rights in Florida. And uh, guess what? Ineo's Bloodless was one of the games in that, so I already owned it. So, you know, trans rights. On top, th this stream provided to you by... The desire for trans rights. Um, so I should talk to you about what we've got going on here on Nerds with Dice, and uh, what I've got going on myself. Uh, for Nerds with Dice, we have a uh, hero catastrophe which is going to happen on uh, January 17th. And uh, then we have a game of Apocalypse Keys that is going to be starting on the 19th. I believe uh, the Hero Catastrophe is at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Apocalypse Keys is at, I should know this because I'm in that game, is at 6.30 Eastern. So, 6.30 Eastern on January 19th, and... I can tell you, I am going to be playing the Shade in Apocalypse Keys. And I am going to be playing 
as a character that is the rightful death taken from their throne by someone. And the apocalypse wants me to return to my throne because the apocalypse cannot occur with a pretender on the throne. Nox. Hey, our friend Nox is going to be in Hero Catastrophe. I knew that too. So that's going to be a very exciting game. That's one of those that I usually don't do games on Wednesdays. I'm making an exception for that soon. Uh, but I usually don't do games on Wednesdays, so I didn't do that for uh, for Hero Catastrophe. And also, yeah, Starless Side Solid, our uh, friend Keldry that was in Ironsworn is also going to be in Apocalypse Keys. I'm excited for that. So what else am I in? Because I'm I'm in a lot of stuff, y'all. I'm in I I might be in too much stuff. Uh, on the fifth of February, I will uh wave hi. Uh, this is me waving hi in the chat. If you haven't followed me over on uh, Queensgate Chronicles, uh, we are going to be having our first game on the 5th of February. Uh, that is going to be taking place at 7, at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and that is going to be a game where my players are going to own a tea shop in a magical city. And uh, things are going to get wild because there are some mind-bending teas that they have access to. Uh, but before that, moving on back on the 8th, I'm going to be over on Singularity uh, for Autumn playing an awful preacher man who must die. Uh, and then on the 9th, the very next day, I am going to be back on Singularity for Camp Runner's Cross, where I play Big Strong Girl at Gay Camp. Uh, and we're figuring out things. I need more things, but I am looking forward to Queensgate. Yeah, Queensgate's going to be a lot of fun. Then on the 14th, I will be on Singularity for Fragments of Tomo Tomorrow's Apocalypse. That is the City of Mist game, where uh, I will be playing a Rift of Rapunzel, who recently found out that her Rift is connected somehow to ancient Greece. And then, on the 15th, I am going to be GMing over on High Shelf Collective, a game of worldwide wrestling where we are going to be uh portraying a uh an independent promotion in Memphis, Tennessee uh that will have the ability to or they are just starting to dip their toes into internet content. So that is going to be that entire plot line. I'm super excited to be doing my first uh, series GMing over on High Shelf Collective. There's going to be a lot of firsts this year for me. I think that's everything that I know the dates of as of right now. Uh, but also, I am a game designer myself, uh, and I am working on the Queen's Gate system. So if you want more uh, information on that, you can follow me, Asynthetic20 on Twitter or Synthetic20 on Blue Sky. Uh, I'm available at both of those. And uh, if you want more information on Queensgate Chronicles, which I will be running more games in that system over on my channel, Queensgate Chronicles is the link on Twitter, or QG Chronicles on, or Twitch is Queensgate Chronicles. Twitter and Blue Sky are QG Chronicles. Uh, so look for more of that in the future. I think uh, I am going to uh, go ahead and throw a raid over to, uh, let's see, how long have y'all been on? 
because we just got a raid, so I don't want to send to somebody who is deep in. Okay, so we are going to raid uh, Fuska. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. And in the meantime, be nerds and have dice. That's slash raid do the command sin. There we go. Y'all have a wonderful day.